It may be a while before you spray fungicides on your farm this year, but we wanted to talk today about what you can do to make your fungicides work better. Because let's face it, we haven't all had great results with fungicides in the past. And if you haven't on your farm, you say, well, I don't know if these fungicides really work. Maybe there are some slight things that you could change that could make a big difference. Slight things that you could change. <laughs> Let me tell yeah. you, Brent, I have hardly talked to anybody that's ever made an application where they just sprayed fungicide. You know, when you aren't spraying just fungicide, you're probably not using the right nozzles. You're not using the right additives. You're not doing all the right things because what are you doing? Well, if you're in wheat, you're saying, well, can I mix it with a herbicide? Well, I suppose you can. If you're in soybeans, you're saying, well, can I mix it with my Roundup or, or an insecticide application? Well, I suppose you can. And, and on corn, it's like, well, when can I spray it? Then I'm going to be out there doing something else. Right, I don't exactly. want to wait until tassel so I have to hire somebody else. I want to be able to do it in my sprayer. Yep. So let's talk a little bit more about these fungicides. What I think is the most important thing you need to know that you probably don't know yet about fungicides is, for the most part, fungicides only move in the xylem in the plant. Okay, there are two transport systems in the plants, and I'm not going to get too deep in this whole thing. There's the xylem and there's the phloem. The phloem can move things both up and down. The xylem only moves up. So in other words, if the fungicides can only move in the xylem, they can only move up. So if you get good coverage in the top leaves of the plant, do you have any coverage in the lower leaves? Is the fungicide going to move to the lower leaves like a herbicide would? No, it's not. Okay, so now you don't have great control. You've just protected half the plant. So you got half your money's worth, that's it. So you have to have great spray coverage. The next thing that I would say is the most important step when it comes to fungicide use is you've got to spray at the right time. Remember that fungicides, and I don't care which one we're talking about, they are way better at preventing disease than they are at curing disease. So if the disease is already set in, you're already too late. You've already given up some yield. Yes, you might be able to stop the disease in its tracks at that point, but what'd you give up already? Two bushels, five bushels, 10 bushels? I don't know. All I know is if you would have sprayed a little earlier, you would have had more yield gain. What I like is when we went down to Brazil and we were worried about soybean rust and we wanted to learn a little more about that. And we talked to the farmers who said, well, when do you scout for it? They said, scout, are you kidding? We've <laughs> got to be out there way ahead of this thing. If we start seeing some, it's already too late and our yields have been destroyed. So don't worry about, well, am I going to scout for a disease? You don't really scout for a disease. You either choose, am I going to protect my crop or am I going to take my chances? If you take your chances, hey, good luck. Yes, you can keep scouting and try and slow it down, as Brian said, but you've got to be there way ahead. And I just think about it this way, too. Fungicides aren't that great. They aren't at all like Roundup, where you see the weed, you go out and kill the weed. If you don't have them on ahead of time, you're just not going to be happy with your fungicides. Yeah, and that is hard to do. I mean, believe me, I, I we farm too, and it's hard for me to write the check out for the fungicide when the crop looks fantastic. And I say, oh boy, I don't know if I really want to spend $20,000 to spray fungicide out there. But you have to look at overall at what's your average going to be. And we've done so many studies on our farm. When you talk about wheat, you talk about soybeans, even in dry country, we're making that pay very consistently over the years. And when we get the big bumps when we gain the 5, 10, 15 bushels, you know, you don't have to have very many of those gains and you just paid for your fungicide for the rest of your life. So yes, we haven't had the greatest success spraying fungicide in corn, but we're in a very dry area of the country. A lot of other areas have worse diseases, have much more humidity and moisture. So they're having Having greater success spraying fungicides in corn. And kind of the last thing, Brian, is picking the right adjuvant package to go with that fungicide. You need something that's going to help that fungicide penetrate and get into that leaf. And you just can't use crop oil or, well, or some of the companies else. do recommend crop oil. You so know, we it, don't want to go against their recommendations. But all I can tell you is there are some different adjuvant choices that we've used where we've had better success. Well, why Protex wouldn't you do something one, like example. Protex? Yeah, when you have something that's specifically designed to help with fungicide performance, that's the kind of thing you want to use. And again, you got to follow label directions. I agree. But don't just say, well, I've already got surfactant in for whatever herbicide I'm out there spraying. It may be a totally different thing to get this fungicide to work right. So in review, when we're talking about fungicides, make sure you get great spray coverage, spray early before you even see the disease, pick the right fungicide, and use a good adjuvant. All those things are great for disease control, Brian, but I'm worried about weed control. Let's focus on our Weed of the Week. It's coming up next.